Ladies and gentlemen, lace up your sneakers. Our next presenter is Abby Murray.
to compete in the NAI uh, tournament. But they had a policy. They didn't have any African Americans play in their league. So he turned it down. The next year, when they changed the policy, he accepted the invitation. And Clarence Walker, a guard that played for him at the time, became the first black man to play in an NAIA tournament. In 1948, he was looking for a new head coaching position. And he was looking at the University of Minnesota. He really wanted it. And Minnesota was thinking about him. He'd been through the interviews. And they were going to call him at 6 PM. And so he was waiting by the phone and waiting by the phone. And they never called. And he thought, oh, they changed their minds. So 15 minutes later, when UCLA called, he took the position. <laughs> the sad thing is, the University of Minnesota did want him, but there was a snowstorm that night, and it knocked out the phone lines, and they couldn't call him till after he had accepted the position at UCLA. But it turned out to be a good thing. He moved out to California with his family, and uh, he turned around a struggling men's basketball program into one that won 10 NCAA championships in 12 years. 1964, 65, 67 through 73, and also 75. They had 88 straight wins, which was a record for collegiate basketball until last year when the University of Connecticut's women's program broke the record. But he has gone down in history as one of the greatest coaches, not just of basketball, but of any sport all time. Sure, he had strict rules. There's a, there's a player, Bill Walton, that for him, uh, and they had a little conflict about Bill's hair one time. Uh, John Wooden had a policy that your hair could not be longer than two inches and couldn't have any facial hair. So one day, Bill walks in to practice, and his hair's long and he's got a beard. And John Wooden looks at him and is like, what's this? And he's like, coach. I was the National Player of the Year, we just won national competition. You don't have the right to tell me that I can't grow my hair out. And he says, you're right, I don't have that right. But I do have the right to say who plays and who doesn't. <laughs> and uh, if you don't fix that within 15 minutes, you're not with me. <laughs> and she, Bill looked at him like, seriously? And after a while, John looked at his watch and was like, 14 minutes. <laughs> so Bill was out of there. Uh, he took off, grabbed his bike, ran down to the barber, was like, just take it off, take it off, take it off. And, and while you're at it, give me a plastic razor and a glass of water. And he's just <laughs> taking it off. And he races back on his bike to the gym, ch checks his, gym out, his uh, bike outside, and runs in and gets in line and prays the coach does not notice that he's missed five minutes of practice. <laughs> Coaching, John Wooden once said, is, is where you can give correction without causing resentment. Bill loved Coach Wooden, and he kept in contact with him until he died. Um, that's, just, that's just what Wooden did. It was more than basketball. It was more than about developing players. It was about developing men. Um, the Wizard of Westwood, as he is sometimes called, because UCLA is located in Westwood, which is a western suburb of Los Angeles. Um, he preferred the title coach. He didn't like people making a big deal out of him. And he said, talent is God-given. Be humble. Fame is man-given. Be grateful. Conceit is self-given. Be careful. Unassuming, fiercely loyal, and strongly self-disciplined, John Wooden embodied the coach. Although, he was memorized, he was remembered in uh, the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. As a player, he was inducted in 1960 and as a coach in 1972. His wife, Nell, died on March 21st, 1985. And every month on the 21st after her death, until his death last summer, he wrote her a love letter. That's over 300 letters. He'd say, honey, I miss you more than ever. My love is still there and I'm keeping my promise. There will never be another. Other than Jesus Christ, John Wooden thought Nell was the greatest person to ever walk the face of the earth. Loving his family and inspiring and teaching players is what Coach Wooden was all about. He was not only a great coach, but a great man.